This week on TCU News Now. A TCU graduate was injured in a Las Vegas mass shooting. TCU students participate in Native American dancing for second annual Indigenous Peoples Day. It gives them a perspective that they might not have ever thought about. And SGA President Ben Taylor discusses his plan for the upcoming school year. Diversity of viewpoint on our campus is something that we absolutely need. This is TCU News Now. The nation is still mourning the events of the deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history Sunday. I'm Riley Knight. And I'm Casey Bowen. 59 people were killed, including the shooter, and 530 others were injured in Las Vegas, Nevada, at the Route 91 Music Festival, which makes for the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. The lone shooter, Stephen Paddock, opened fire on the crowd of about 22,000 people from the 32nd story of Mandalay Bay Resort, before he killed himself after a standoff with police. Among those wounded, one of TCU's own was seriously injured. El Gargano, a 2016 graduate, was shot in the back of the head. She was rushed to the hospital to receive emergency surgery and is now recovering. Her loved ones, including family and friends, say that they're in a lot of pain seeing her go through so much, but they're all trying to remain strong. To help support her recovery, a GoFundMe account was started by a close friend. And right now, over $80,000 has been raised since Monday. Her close friend Kaylee Hicks was her sorority sister and little in Gamma Phi Beta. She said it was a whirlwind of emotions when she found out about Gargano. She said a friend left a voicemail crying, and since then, the past few days have been nothing but shock. But now it's, it's starting to hit. Hicks said Gargano is the most selfless and happiest person who has touched many people around her. She said it's a helpless feeling being multiple states away living in Dallas, but knows that her friend is recovering. Gargano's father said she has slept peacefully the past two nights and is continuing to show improvements now that the swelling in her brain is going down and the excess fluid is draining. For more updates on Gargano's condition and progress, you can visit her GoFundMe page on GoFundMe.com backslash L Gargano. While the fallout from the Las Vegas shooting continues, President Donald Trump's team is dealing with the fallout from his visit to Puerto Rico. Our Politifrog correspondent Elizabeth Campbell is here with more. Elizabeth? Thanks, Casey. Trump's Office of Management and Budget Director Mick Mulvaney is trying to walk back comments yesterday that the president made. Trump told Fox News that Puerto Rico's debt may have to be wiped away, causing Puerto Rican bonds to plummet. Mulvaney took to TV this morning to say that Trump's statements should not be taken word for word, and that the administration is focusing on ways to help rebuild Puerto Rico, not on a restructuring of the debt process. Trump also commented on Puerto Rico's debt earlier in the day Tuesday as part of his visit to the island. He told people that while he loved Puerto Rico, they had thrown his budget a little out of whack. He also tossed out paper towels into a crowd of people, handed out flashlights by telling people they wouldn't need them, even though 95% of the island is still without power, and asked a member of the Air Force to speak on behalf of the Coast Guard. Now, all of this was going on while Congress is working on their tax reform plan, and Trump's deadline to reaffirm the Iranian deal is fast approaching. Be sure to check out politifrog.com for more political news. Kelsey Patterson, Coach Gary Patterson's wife, is putting together a fundraiser with other college football coach wives to raise money to help support those affected by the recent natural disasters. Given Beyond the Game is the name of the project. So far, 20 coaches' wives are involved, including other Big 12 schools. Kansas State, OU, UT, and West Virginia. And the number of schools is projected to grow too, Patterson said. The nonprofit will raise funds for the Houston Food Bank, Texas A&M Veterinarian Emergency Response Teams, Feeding South Florida, and for victims in Puerto Rico. Donations can be made now through December 9th at givenbeyondthegame.org. Students who have been at TCU for two or more years probably remember seeing a large Native American tent in the Commons, and it was there again last week. The university and the Native and Indigenous Student Association have decided to make the Indigenous Peoples Day an annual event. As part of the day, TCU held its second annual Native American and Indigenous Peoples Day Symposium on Monday. I caught up with those who hosted the event to talk about its significance and what this day is all about. The sounds of drums and singing could be heard throughout the Blue Ballroom Monday night. These performances were just two of the many activities that composed TCU's second annual Native American and Indigenous Peoples Day Symposium. I think for TCU students, it's 
a way for us to live out our mission statement. I know a lot of people like hark on the mission statement, a lot of professors, but honestly, like it is to be, what is it, ethical leaders in a global community. Like Native Americans are part of your global community and they're closer to home than a lot of people think they are. I think TCU students can definitely benefit from it because considering like TCU is not very, um, majority is not um, a minority. So I think that it also um, enlightens TCU students because it gives them a perspective that they might not have ever thought about. We are on indigenous land, say it with me. I am on indigenous land. We are on indigenous land. Oh, that's so good, Texas. The symposium featured keynote speaker, Matika Wilbur, a Swinomish and Tulalip photographer from Seattle, Washington. There's no such thing as an American Indian. The only thing that an American Indian has known is struggle, slavery, termination, relocation, assimilation, genocide. Wilbur talked about dismantling Native American stereotypes through her work, Project 562. Project 562 is a multi-year national photography project dedicated to photographing over 562 federally recognized tribes in the United States. I think we have to come together. Our histories are intertwined, our faiths are intertwined, and no matter where our ancestors were born and how they interacted with each other, we are now in a time where we could change those things that we believed before today. At the end of the night, students were invited to take part in a traditional dance led by dance group, Tribal Traditions, Arts, and Education. The university itself is actually located on the historical homelands of the Wichita. And for those who want to get involved, TCU's Native and Indigenous Student Association is open to both Native and non-Native students. SGA President Ben Taylor shared some of his goals for the school year. These included encouraging students to voice their opinions on campus food services as the Sodexo contract nears expiration and uses SGA to guide them to administrators. He also talked about encouraging political discourse on campus to promote unity between students. The diversity of viewpoint on our campus is something that we absolutely need. Um, it provides greater resiliency to our campus, it provides a multitude of viewpoints that necessarily in, in, in the system of shared governance that we have, um, make our campus a better place. However, if we don't intentionally include all groups of people in, the, in these conversations, then what results is um, even more segregation and kind of siloing of, of people's viewpoints. You can watch more of our interview with Taylor at TCU360.com. Senior administrators and committee leaders held an open forum for the Strategic Plan for the Vision and Action Lead On Campaign. Strengthening academic profile and its reputation have been priorities for TCU, and the committee wants to pursue bright students and increase undergraduate enrollment by 600 students in coming years. Other topics of discussion included new school of medicine, expansion opportunities, strengthening undergrad and graduate profiles, campus size, balance, and diversity along with TCU's ability to compete and excel in a power athletic conference. You can learn more about what Lead On has in store for the university at future forums throughout October. All open forums will be in the Brown Lupton University Union Auditorium. Coming up after the break, TCU Wellness Week promotes healthy physical, mental, and spiritual being. Two TCU alumni have books coming out, and ESPN College Game Day returns to the TCU Campus Commons. Before doers, dreamers, and trailblazers make their mark on the world, there was TCU. TCU, where dreams take their course. TCU celebrated its first Wellness Week and had many events to help students with their physical, mental, and spiritual health. Our Will Koenig checked out a few of these events. One event that went on during the week was the study abroad fair, and Ashley West, a training assistant for the Child Development Services, says traveling abroad can help students with their mental wellness. 
it expands kind of your own little box and your own little bubble. So you get to go outside of um, TCU, you get to go outside of the country and experience something new and that brings challenges, but it helps you just, I think, be a better person when you get to experience something different and you get great faculty and staff that go alongside of you to invest in you as well. Another event that went on during the week was the flu clinic. And Kelly Jones, a senior nursing student, had this advice for students. The misconception with that is the flu shot after you get it, it takes two weeks to really protect you. So a problem a lot of people have is they probably already have the flu before they get the shot and they start showing symptoms after the shot and so they associate the two. But uh, the flu shot definitely does not cause you to get the flu. Brad Stort, Associate Director of the Wellness Center, says that not having time for wellness can have a negative so impact on your brain. One of the reasons why we want people to remember, always focus on wellness, even at your busiest times, because it's going to help you be more efficient and more effective in what you do. And you bleed easily. Stort okay. wants this to become an annual event that occurs every fall semester. I'm Will Koenig for TCU News Now. Thursday's wellness event will be a 15-minute walk around campus at noon with Fort Worth's Mayor Betsy Price, starting at the King Family Commons. After, wa after the walk, there will be free food. Clint Gresham, a TCU alum and former Seattle Seahawks long snapper, made a visit to TCU to talk about his new book. The book, Becoming, Loving the Process to Wholeness, is about him learning the importance of self-worth and not measuring yourself on successes and failures. He says, if you live for people's approval, you will die over their criticism. Gresham will do a book signing at the TCU campus store on Saturday before the football game. Gresham isn't the only horned frog out with a new book. TCU alumnus Bob Schieffer's new book, Overload, hit the shelves this week. Schieffer's book is about finding the truth in today's deluge of news. He talked with more than 40 media leaders to assess the state of political journalism and provide analysis of those who cover it. Schieffer's book talks of how reporters' integrity has been challenged during the first weeks of the Trump administration and the rising role of opinions before facts. He also works in his personal stories ranging from his time as child to his career in journalism. ESPN's College Game Day will make its second visit to TCU Saturday when the Horned Frogs host the West Virginia Mountaineers. College Game Day is a pregame show broadcast by ESPN featuring hosts Reese Davis, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet, Desmond Howard, and David Pollack. They will set up in the campus commons for the 8 a.m. broadcast, and fans are welcome to bring signs supporting their team. Just for, you know, growing up as a kid, you always watch game day. You want to see those big teams on there, the big-name teams, and to be, you know, chosen as one of those big-name teams to be on that game. It's just, it's amazing. It's really exciting. I'm, I'm really glad that uh, ESPN, that we chose game day to come because it's been since 2009. I'm glad we got ourselves in a position where we could do that. It's great for TCU, it's great for Fort Worth and the, and the Metroplex, the community, all of it. I mean, it's what it did for us last time, uh, being able to show off our campus and all the things we do, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. So uh, for everybody else, it's great. For us, I mean, we don't, we'll be in our hotel room getting ready to go. Students are able to begin lining up at midnight in the commons at the north and south entrances, entrances in between the dorms. Shane Battis joins us with the latest movie hitting theaters this weekend. Shane, what film is running this weekend? Well, Riley, a big film is hitting theaters this week. The long-anticipated Blade Runner 2049 comes out this weekend. It's been 35 years since the original Blade Runner came out in 1982, and many feared that 35 years was too late for them to make a sequel. But earlier reviews show the sequel is amazing. The film starring Harrison Ford and Ryan Gosling is sitting at a 94% on Rotten Tomatoes with an average score of 8.5 out of 10. The movie takes place 30 years after the first, and Ryan Gosling plays a new Blade Runner who goes on a mission that leads him to find Rick Deckard, the original Blade Runner. That sounds super cool. I'm super excited for it. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. I don't know. The first one was pretty slow for a movie called Blade Runner, so I'm kind of hoping this one kind of picks up the pace a little bit. You guys a little we'll bit see. faster. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit would be great. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I'm just a sucker for Ryan Gosling, so what can I say? Maybe. Oh, me that's, too. That's the only thing that's pulling me into that movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all the news we have for this week. For more updates, check out TC360.com. Have a great week.